Good morning, good morning, good morning. Praise the Lord. This is St. Francis Children's Church, and we are happy to be with you, with you in spirit, and that you're watching us this morning. We are so glad that you've tuned in to praise the Lord with us. This morning, I'm very excited because we have a very, very interesting lesson, and it's about fighting on the winning side. Who doesn't want to fight on the winning side? Everyone wants to fight on the winning side. We're going to learn more in our lessons, but before we do that, we're going to have a word of prayer. And after praying, we're going to do some praise and worship, sing for the Lord, shout for him, because we are always on the winning side. Hands together, eyes closed. Dear Lord, we thank you for this morning. We thank you that you've given us life, that we can breathe that we can enjoy your presence this morning. We pray that, Lord, as you teach us in your word about fighting and winning on the good side, that, Lord, you will be with us. May we learn from you, and may we hear your voice when you call us to fight and to win. In Jesus' name, we have prayed and believed. Amen. Okay, let us stand up, let us stand up, and enjoy the presence of the Lord, because we are on the winning side. Oh, no. 
on the winning side. And with God, we always have to be winners. Even in this journey, even in this coronavirus, we are going to win because we are always fighting on the winning side. So we shall surrender everything to the Lord. All our cares, all our burdens, we shall surrender them all to God because we know at the end of the day, if we lift our eyes to him, we shall win. So join me and we sing this song that we surrender everything to God so that at the end of the day, we are winners. everybody you're welcome to our Bible lesson for today my name is teacher Sam and I'm going to take you through a very beautiful lesson but before we go there last Sunday we learned something special and we read from what book the book of Jude the book of Timothy and also Proverbs what were we learning if you remember very well we were saying fight the good fight of faith and from what we learned last sunday with uncle ben we learned something special from acts 1 and 8 that someone's special and that is the holy spirit it tells us the holy spirit gives us power that power that he gives us helps us to contend it helps us to keep alert why because there are so many distractions around us, and that's what the devil has brought. So, we are told we need to press on, press on, and fight. Fight for your faith. 
because the enemy is after bringing it down. And this Sunday, we continue with fighting, but we are looking at something special. If you look at my screen and see the celebrations there, people jumping, someone dancing. You can see Italy. You know what happened to Italy recently? Okay, there's also Argentina, and there's a guy called Messi. You know what happened? We know all these things. There's a guy there called Kipro Teach. You know what he's able to do for Uganda? Now, I just want us to tell me, tell me just one word that can define all what you're seeing. Just one word. This word starts with a V, the one that I want. Who gets a word with a V? V is for, everybody say V is for victory, victory, victory. Can we spell the word victory? Let's go. V, I, C, T, O, R, Y. Victory. What is victory like? Victory is an act of defeating an enemy. Now, before we go into our lesson for today, I want us to say a prayer and we talk about this word, victory, defeating the enemy. Let's pray. Loving Father, I want to thank you for this beautiful Sunday that you've given to us, O oh Lord, to just learn about how great you are at battle, how victorious you make us, O oh Lord, because you have won, O oh Lord. We bless you, Jesus. We ask you, Lord, to open our hearts, open our minds. Help us learn something about what you're able to do as we fight for our faith. We bless you. We thank you. For you are great and there's no one like you. In the name of Jesus, I firmly believe. Everybody says, Amen. So, victory is defeating the enemy. What else? Opponents, a battle, a game, a competition, isn't it? Now, I want someone to give me a sound of victory. What does it sound like? Is it ah, 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 crying? Is that a sound of victory? No. How about yay? Winners, winners, winners. Hey, 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 hey. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Victory. How about actions, actions? Someone runs and comes and gives you a big hug. Boo! Victory. Victory is such a beautiful thing. Victory puts smiles on us. Victory keeps us going because we want more and more and more. But today we're going to learn that there's a side we need to fight on. Fight on the winning side. That's another word for victory, winning. Another word is success. Another word is, can you guess with a T, triumph. Another word, anybody, can anyone guess another word? Conquest. That's a new word for the tense and above, conquest. Tell your sister, what is conquest? Military things, army things. If you don't know, go to your dictionary and look for the word Conquest, it's also another word to define victory. And we are saying, trust God to give us victory over our lives. Now we are going to go to a Bible lesson. And we shall look at Joshua. Joshua is in the Old Testament. So if you open, 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 Exodus, Deuteronomy, Leviticus, Numbers, keep opening. And then you find Joshua somewhere. Joshua 10, and we are going to look at the children of God being led by Joshua. What happened? Victory was theirs. But let's see what happened in Joshua 10. I'll read for us verse 1 to verse 5, but the lesson is verse 1 to verse 10. I'll tell you what happened in 6 to 11, okay? But let's read 1 to 5 and see. Verse 1. Now, Adonizedek, king of Jerusalem, heard that Joshua had taken Ai and destroyed it, doing to Ai and its king as he had done to Jericho. 
and its king. And the people of Gibeon made a treaty of peace with Israel and had become their allies. He and his people were very much alarmed at this. Who was that? Adonizedek. Because Gibeon was an important city, like one of the royal cities. It was larger than I, and all its men were good fighters. So Adonizedek, the king of Jerusalem, appealed, who? appealed to Hoham, king of Hebron, Piram, king of Jamath, Japhia, king of Lachish, and Daba, king of Eglon. Come up and help me take Gibeon, he said, because it's made peace with Joshua and the Israelites. Verse 5. Then the five kings of the Amorites, the kings of Jerusalem, Hebron, Jamath, Lachish, Eglon, joined forces. They moved up with all their troops and took up positions against Gibeon and attacked it. In Joshua 1 to 5, we learn that there was Gibeon in the land that they were capturing. But Gibeon had heard that there is a mighty army that comes and sweeps anyone. They just took over Ai. They took over Jericho. You know what they did? They just marched around Jericho. You remember the story of Jericho and its walls, how they went down? Now, Gibeon knew how special these guys were. And Gibeon went and tricked them into a treaty. And this treaty was, never fight us. Wow, they were smart. What does that tell me? That even them, who are not followers of the God of Israel, knew that that God is so powerful. And so they decided that, you know what? Let's go and join the other guys. Their side is the winning side. The enemy is weakened as more people join the Lord's side. The devil can't be happy when you bring more, win more souls, fish out people, and they come and join you on the Lord's side. He cannot be happy. The king of the Amorites was not happy at all. In the same way, the devil cannot be happy. But should that stop you from joining the winning side? No. The winning side is where we all need to be. Like Gibeon did. They knew what that God is. The God of Israel is so strong and mighty in battle. So they joined the winning side. How are you drawing yourself closer to God? What things are stealing your time from reading and praying to God? What things are stealing your time and stopping you from reading the word of God and praying to him? Remember, his side is the winning side. James 4 tells us to draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Knowing the strength of Israel, Gibeon came and joined them. In the same way, we need to help other people join the winning side by doing the things that show them how powerful and how loving our God is. Okay? So, what happened? 6 to 11. Joshua did not refuse to join Gibeon. He went on and faced the five kings, the Amorite five kings. And who was on their side? The Lord was on their side. And what did God say? In verse 8, God did something special for them. He said, the Lord said to Joshua, do not be afraid of them. I have given them into your hand. Not one of them will be able to withstand you. That was a beautiful assurance. And that's what our God tells us. His word assures us that we are more than conquerors. That is Romans 8 verse 31. It tells us that we are more than conquerors. That is an assurance. And so Joshua took on the battle, faced the five kings, and destroyed all of them at once. But the Bible tells us something special. That the sword of the Israelites killed less people than what the Lord did. What did the Lord do? The Lord sent hailstones. You know what hailstones are? He sent hailstones down. It rained on them and killed the enemy. So the ones who died because of the hailstones 
were more than what Joshua himself had to face and destroy and defeat. Wow, that is what it means when God says, I'll be on your side. He will not even let us use our own physique to do things. He will fight for us. He will clear the way for us. That is why we should all join him on the winning side. So we learn that God orders our steps and he delivers us. God orders our steps and he delivers us. He ordered the steps of the Israelites and he was able to deliver them by guiding them. But how do you feel when you find some obstacles in your life? Do you get discouraged? Do you question the Lord? Do you give up? How do you feel when you get some obstacles in your life? You're reading for an exam and you fall sick. And it's tomorrow. But today you can't read because you are sick. How does it make you feel? Of course we feel terrible. We feel bad. We get discouraged sometimes. But remember, the Bible tells us today in Romans 8, 31, that we are more than conquerors. Sickness will not bring us down. The current disease that is around us should not cause us to fear that we can't even do certain things. Let us trust the Lord that he will take us through. As we do the right things, he will surely protect us. We shall walk through it and we shall be victorious. So let no, nothing discourage you as you walk. Fear is here to bring us down. Joshua did not fear the five kings. He faced them with the help of the Lord. He was victorious. When Paul was falling in prison, he did not complain. What did Paul do? Paul used as a chance to talk to the people in the prison, the warder and the people in the prison. And beautiful things happened. Joshua did not refuse. Joshua took on the battle. We should not also refuse. We should stand and be bold and keep moving because our trust and our faith is in the Lord. We just see God's help at all times to grant you victory. We all want to be victorious. But we need to seek the Lord at all times. Through his word, as we read his word. Through prayer, as we talk to him. But something special should have happened in our lives. Jesus should be the Lord of our life. If you've not given your life to Jesus, it is very difficult. If you want to be a winner, like he teach, you need to put your trust also in the Lord because he will protect you. The border borders are everywhere. They could hit you, break your legs, and tomorrow you cannot run. You might stop at the two trophies, yet the Lord had kept ten trophies for you to take. If you put your trust in him and ask him to guide you every day, he will surely protect you. Victory is ours. Corinthians 15, 57 tells us, But thanks be to God who gives us victory through Jesus Christ. Have you given your life to Jesus Christ? Does he know you? Do you call him Lord and Savior? Jesus is the way. Jesus is the truth. Jesus is life. If you want that victor's crown, a crown on, of victory, you need Jesus in your life. And if you've never given your life to Christ, I want you to say this prayer today. Close your eyes and say, Dear Lord, I thank you for you are a God of victory. Dear Lord, today I want to join the winning side. I come before you Asking that you forgive me, that you wash me and cleanse me with your precious blood. Today, I accept and confess that I am new, that I am born again, and forever I will walk with you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. If you've said that prayer, you are born again. What does that mean? You're going to live a new life. A new life in which you and God are like this. You will talk to him every day. 
you read your Bible, the Holy Spirit will guide you. You talk to other people who have joined the winning side, other believers, and fellowship with them. That will help you grow each and every day, just like our friends who gave their life to Christ long ago. This is activity. It reminds us that victory is in Jesus. Victory is in Jesus. Jesus is a strong foundation. If Jesus is our foundation, we can be victorious and we can win more and more trophies. We can win more and more people. We can weaken the devil by doing the right thing. Our victory is in Jesus. And so let's do this and keep it to remind us that Jesus is the source of victory. Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 20, which is a memory verse that I believe you remember from last Sunday's lesson. What does it say, everybody? Before we read, what does it say? Proverbs 16 and verse 20. Whoever heeds to instruction prospers. Whoever gives heed to instruction prospers. And best is the one who trusts in the Lord. Other versions say, whoever listens to instructions will prosper. If you listen to instructions of the Lord, you will be victorious. You will be successful. You will be winners. You will be conquerors. So it reminds us that whoever gives instruction, whoever heeds to instruction, will prosper. And blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord. That's the memory verse for today. And I want you to close your eyes and just think about Proverbs 16, verse 20. It says, whoever listens to the Lord will prosper. And blessed is he who trusts in the Lord. Have you trusted in the Lord? Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for teaching us about a great victory and a mighty thing you did for the Israelites, that they didn't have to fight on their own, but you fought for them by dropping hailstones, Lord. You are a God of miracles. Lord, we ask that you guide us, you lead us, you give us victory, Lord, as we walk with you. Victory over illness, victory over poor performance, victory over hunger, victory over anything that troubles us, O oh God. We believe, Lord, and we choose to trust in you because you tell us, blessed is he who has put their trust in you. Teach us, Lord, to trust you each and every day. In the name of Jesus, we pray and believe. And everybody says, amen. amen. Let's go out and fight for a good fight of faith. Our victory remains in Jesus. Bye.